Good morning. Um, so I'm not going to talk very long on an echo. Uh, I hope most of you have heard of the name since you're in the Netherlands and we're one of the largest utilities in the Netherlands and already since 2007 solely focused on sustainable energy. Ch challenges, so talking about challenges. This is one of our main challenges right now. Um, our world is changing significantly and not only our world but also our role as an energy company, utility, what you want to call it. Um, and I'm not so much worried that Gardner says this. Gardner says, okay, I don't believe that a large energy company will have any assets. What I'm worried about is that I guess about 60-70% of the startups presenting yesterday and today is basically telling us we are going to make you obsolete. And obviously we support startups, but we don't support the fact that we would become obsolete. So that's our challenge. How do we stay relevant? How do we change our business model into something that will still be relevant in a changing world? So this is what we believe in. I'm not going to explain the whole picture, but basically what it used to be was we build assets, centralized wind parks, solar farms, hydro plants, and we distribute it to customers, and that's going to change. Customers are going to produce part of their own energy, uh, may have storage centralized for a neighborhood, maybe locally at home. We'll start trading that energy, so how do we deal with this? Uh, something else is needed then, not a centralized producer, not a centralized dis distributor, but someone who can facilitate a marketplace and the services that come with that. So our mission is still the same, has been the same from 2007 onwards, which is we want a world where sustainable energy is available for everyone. However, our challenge now is how do you make that a service and not just a commodity product? Well, first of all, you need to have the funds and, and basically the, the, the playground to do that. So we're going to invest at least 100 million in innovation and startups, basically from last year's onwards, in order to accelerate our own change and in order to make this happen. However, that's not enough because I guess the, the main pitfall for corporates is just to start spending money whenever they want to change something. And you need to change more than just funds you're willing to invest. So we need to escape and basically make sure that we prevent some of the corporate stereotypes, you know, the pitfalls that you could fall into. Stuck in red tape. You're never get it, gonna get anything done if you stick to your standard corporate procedures. I guess a lot of startups here in the room know the, the typical sales cycle to sell anything to a corporate, how long it takes to actually get a decision. And if you're going to do that with innovation and in working with startups, it's not going to work. So what did we do? We set up a separate business unit where we basically put all people working on innovation together. We, we attracted a lot of new people from outside, so not to just have the standard, uh, basically, an eco mindset there, but really keep fueling that with new people. So we, we believe that, you know, even though we strongly believe in our own uh, strategy and our own focus, we need to keep challenging that by getting people from outside into our teams, challenging ourselves. And this team needs to have the freedom to do what it's, what's necessary. So it's innovating by ourselves, investing in startups, working together with startups, scouting new ideas, new technologies. So we put that together. It's 40 FTE now, but it's, it's growing every day. Stuck all day in meetings. Well, I'm honestly now going to say that we solved that problem. I mean, I have a lot of meetings. However, we do set our priorities right because meetings are no meetings. I do get a full day off to talk here. So I guess that's progress. Afraid to try anything new? Well, there's only one solution. Just do it. And we're doing it. Um, our own innovation, a mini hybrid heat pump, which is smaller, so a lot of households can use it, and which is significantly reducing the amount of gas people are using. Uh, sharing solar panels. Solar panels, if you don't have a roof for it, but you do want to you know, invest in solar energy. Uh, we just launched our so Zonnehub, or Solar Hub uh, in English. Smart charging, internal startup. Jetlix launched their app, which makes your electric car actually use green energy uh, when it's available. We have our own data sciences team, which is evaluating basically all opportunities that are there, because data is the, one of the next new things. Uh, and those include blockchain. What can we do that? Can we use that for trading of energy, etc.? Um, and we announced uh, th that we were going to be the first distributor of Tesla Powerwall, and we're looking into business models and service models around that. So we believe we're on the right track. So what am I doing here? Well, quite simply, we can't do this on our own. We're going to be faster, more innovative, more entrepreneurial when we use knowledge in the room here, in the world outside, and we believe that a lot of that knowledge will be and will come from startups. 
what are we looking for? We believe in smart platforms and smart services. So we're not a typical investor in uh, clean tech technology, so to say. We're looking for the service models behind that. What propositions can we bring to our customers? Uh, this is a picture that we truly believe in, uh, whereas you know, solar is a big trend, uh, demand steering is a big trend, electric mobility is a big trend, but in the end, something needs to connect that all, and that's where platforms and services come into play. So what are typically uh, themes that we, we ourselves work around and invest in? That's smart home. Um, Joris Jonker from Pubius here, who is one of our, our huge partners, obviously, in this area, uh, where we believe that we, with a smart thermostat, you can get, gain access to the house and then use that as a platform basically to bring other services in as well. Smart buildings, we announced recently our investment, minority investment in Cymax, which is a company that uh, provides software to monitor the performance of the installations in your building. So you can not only save energy on it quite quickly, but you can also lengthen the duration basically that your installation uh, can last because you're using it more effectively. Smart outdoor or smart cities, smart building plan or a smart uh, public lighting platform Luminex, which then again can be extended with others as well. Uh, and flexibility. Uh, we invested in the startup Peaks who will present it today, so I'm not going to explain because they can uh, do a lot better than we do. Um, but those are the things that we're already doing. And then what are we looking for? We're looking for other services, which I wrote a couple of basically themes below, to extend those platforms that can work on those platforms or have maybe something, you know, not necessarily complementary, but in the same, same area. Same true for services. So solar and storage, mobility, sustainable heating, and anything to do with well, what we call communities, but that's cooperatives sharing peer-to-peer, -peer, because that's one of the trends that we believe in. It will not only be sustainable, it will be decentralized, but that also means that it needs to be together. We need to start more sharing, we need more marketplaces and more business models that make use of that. So what do we offer? Well, basically we have two areas where we're active. One is new business development, which we do ourselves and we like to do together with other parties. So that's opportunities for pilots, uh, opportunities to get an ECO as a launching customer, to share knowledge, to get support from the various uh, departments that we have and the expertise that we have, and to work on joint development. For who is this applicable? Well, it makes most sense for early stage pro uh, startups who have you know, a minimal viable product, uh, who have a promising technology but need a little bit more testing, who have a very strong team and who are active and basically based in Northwestern Europe. We also do investing, which is uh, myself and my team. Uh, that's typically more applicable for a bit later stage startups. So we do investing, co-investing, preferably, uh, where we can access, you know, we can offer not only funds, but access to our customer base. Again, obviously the knowledge and support, access to our departments, to market access, uh, data, knowledge, etc. what is necessary to make a, a startup grow uh, and preferably commercial sh scaling. So for whose is this applicable? Product market fit is, you know, is visible, has been tested. There's a working product or service that is ready to, to enter the market and really scale. So first customers preferably already there. Uh, activities in, or at least ambitious in, uh, Northwestern Europe. So that's it. No, it's not. I, I always wanted to do this because I see this all the time with startups. So I, I thought I'm going to test this as well. One more thing. We're hiring. We're looking for colleagues to help us out in achieving this, in achieving the success, in achieving the acceleration and innovation that we want. And uh, in particular, we're looking for an experienced investment manager to support the venturing team, and also for a manager of business development, product development, who's basically going to head all the internal uh, business development teams. So that's it. Uh, thank you for your time and any questions or if you believe that you're a very promising startup that fits us well or that you're a very promising individual that could help our team out, then uh, feel free to contact me. Thank you. All right. <laughs>